Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yeah! Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another podcast episode. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Lakeith Stanfield situation. So Lakeith has been trending literally the past few days. If you guys do not know, him and Charlamagne the God have been beefing literally for going on two years now. I believe that Lakeith lives in Charlemagne's head rent free. And Charlemagne lives in Lakeith's head rent free because they just do this petty tit for tat. And they've been doing it, like I said, close to two years now. So let me go ahead and kind of bring it back to how all of this started. So what happened is that basically when Lakeith went on The Breakfast Club, um, I don't know, I just kind of felt like Charlemagne wasn't really feeling him. He didn't really give him the most utmost respect. And La- Lakeith kind of trolls when he interviews, so I don't think he gave them a lot to work with. So anyhow... Lakeith ended up doing an interview, and in that interview, he basically said that said the Shade Room, Lipstick Alley, Breakfast Club, World Star, and many others are anti-black. And then he went on like a small rant, and he went on to say this further. He says, it's a fact that these platforms are usually or tend to be feeding grounds for negative reinforcements towards black nonconformists. They bolster faux vanity and hold white supremacy scope over black men and women, often highlighting negative attributes and downplaying mind expanding ones. They serve as bottomless coward consumption pits and digital audio or otherwise slave mentality museums at all you want. So that is what Lakeith said. And basically, when Charlemagne got word, honey, he went in. He said, you're not going to put the breakfast club in this shit. He literally went on a 10 minute rant about Lakeith. He went and found old clips. Charlemagne brought receipts. I mean, it was a mess. I've never seen Charlemagne's donkey of the day be this in depth. OK, so y'all go ahead and listen to this. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Donkey of the day for Thursday, November 14th goes to an actor by the name of Lakeith Stanfield. You know Lakeith Stanfield, right? Uh, he plays Darius on the TV show Atlanta. You may know him as Andre from Get Out. Remember, he was the black man who went missing. And then when Chris hit him with the flash at the brunch auction clan rally, he flipped out. Yeah, that brother. Well, yesterday he posted this on Instagram. He posted. The Shade Room, Lipstick Alley, Breakfast Club, World Star, and many others are or anti-black. That's how he typed it. He said, and many other are, A-R-E, then typed or, or, are, O-R, anti-black. I guess he didn't know which word to use or how to use it, so he decided to do both to to, to, to be safe. I I get it. Now, I had a great session with my spiritual counselor, uh, Yachty, last night, dropping a clues bomb for Yachty. Uh, I... I also have therapy Friday at three. One thing that my therapist and spiritual counselor allowed me to see is the God and everything. Everything is God. So even though this statement pissed me off for a second yesterday, uh, it did. And I'll tell you why. I'm, I'm still going to see the good of God in this statement and use it as an opportunity to teach Lakeith. Because Lakeith, you have to practice what you tweet or in this case, post on the ground. Uh, I don't know what the hell Lakeith Stanfield is talking about, but I do know myself, Charlemagne the God, in the nine years I've been on this breakfast club, I strive uh, every day to be the perfect balance of ratchetness and righteousness. All right. There's not another show out there that goes from Byron Allen to Black Youngster like it's nothing. All right. You tell me a show uh, where, where the guest list goes from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to 21 Savage. This show has gone from me talking about sucking farts out of women's asses to me encouraging brothers and sisters to go to therapy and invest in their mental wealth. You know why, Lakeith? Because that's life and that's the way life works. OK, I'm not going to sit here and act like we've gotten it right all the time because we haven't. We've made plenty of mistakes on this radio, plenty of things I've looked back on and said, yeah, we should have played that a certain way. And all that critique is fine. But Lakeith Stanfield, don't you ever fix your raggedy ass mouth to call the author of black privilege because i truly believe it is a privilege to be black anti-black okay ask all those white people who call up here every day complaining about me saying crack ass cracker (laughs) or mayonnaise or asking me why everything got to be black and white all right ask them 
Okay, if I'm anti-black, don't ever fix your mouth to call a brother like me anti-black because, young king, I know for a fact you don't take the chances that I do every day in the name of blackness, all right? That's exactly why you didn't call out any white media outlets because your publicist, your agent, and those Hollywood executives you work for would have had a fit. You would never take that chance. See, as a black person, it's safe to go at black outlets like Shade Room, World Star, Lipstick Alley, Breakfast Club, and many others, as you said, but you would never fix your mouth to say that about any of the white outlets that do the same damn thing <laughs> because you know that would affect you in Hollywood. So who's the real coward? Okay, who's really got the slave mentality? If it's easier to call out your own black people than it is to go to others, white folk. Lakeith is one of these folks who be on red carpets and they don't even speak to black outlets. Okay, walk right past Baller Alert or Bossip or Jasmine Brand and go talk to E or people as if those outlets don't report so-called negative stories, as if those outlets are any less messy. Okay, Lakeith, I think it's hard to get the character Andre out of your spirit because it sounds like you may still be in the sunken place, but I'm not about to go back and forth with you about this. I'm going to simply say when you are on any of these platforms or even when you are on your own platforms like social media how about be the change you want to see in the world don't give these platforms negativity to reinforce because all we can do is provide the platform the artists provide the content it's been plenty of people who have sat in this room and elevated the conversation in this room elevated the vibration in this room you said that these platforms highlight negative attributes and downplay mind expanding ones but when you get the opportunity to speak do you do that king i'm just playing that to remind you that you you haven't always been this woke warrior you claim to be. All right, so you guys just heard Charlemagne ranting and raving about Lakeith and calling him out and saying that, you know, he caters to the white media outlets but wants to disrespect the black ones. Now, I will say this. All of these outlets have their good and bad points. And, you know, like I've said in the past, it's always easier to blame the outlets and to blame the commentators and say, oh, they're negative or, oh, they're only reporting on negative stuff. But but I know that a lot of us try to be fair and balanced. We try to report on everything, right? The Breakfast Club, they try to be fair and balanced. Um, Shade Room, they try to be fair and balanced. But the problem is a lot of people... But the problem is, like I always say, I put it back on the consumers. When we make positive content, content that's feeding your mind and your brain and your soul, things that make you think, y'all don't watch that shit. I mean, let's just keep it real. You know, people always want to talk about what the black outlets need to do. And when they do it, they just don't watch it. You know what I'm saying? I make positive videos. I make videos, you know, about, you know, just deep stuff, things to help people. They don't get views like my, you know, videos talking about foolishness and gossip and ratchetness and who's smashing who. So, again... It's, it's about the consumers until the consumers decide that they don't want that type of news or that type of information or those type of blog posts. They're going to keep being posted because that is what people gear towards. People love negativity. People love drama. They claim they don't, honey. Oh, I don't do drama. I don't, oh, oh, all this is bad. Oh, all this gossip, all this, this and all this spilling of tea. But guess what? As soon as that damn bell rings, they're the first ones in the comment section talking about first. You know, so I think there's a lot of blame to go around, not just, you know, with the outlets, but also with the consumers of the outlets. But I definitely understood where, you know, Lakeith was coming from. And I did, you know, understand where Charlamagne was coming from as well. But, honey, the way he was offended about all them receipts, I'm like, well, damn, he took this real personal because I don't recall Angie saying shit. And I don't know who's running the, you know, the damn world star hip hop no more since Q died. But I don't recall them responding back either. It was only Charlemagne that was like just so upset. So this whole situation was a mess. So anyways, fast forward to 2021. Yes, we're in a whole new year, honey. So fast forward to 2021. And um, if you guys do not know, there's a new movie out. It's a black movie. Um, it's out on HBO and everything else. And it's called Judas and the Black Messiah. It's really good. And in that movie, um, Lakeith Stanfield is playing FBI informant Bill O'Neill. And this was like a really crazy character. He went in to be, you know, friends and to be buddy buddy with Fred Hampton that's being played by Daniel Kalula. So this was like a really deep role. And a lot of people were shocked to find out that Fred Hampton was so young. He was only 21, you know, and basically what they're saying happened is that the informant played by Lakeith, he poisoned him. 
he poisoned him to make him sleep through the deadly raid that got him killed. So it was it's a really deep movie. So anyhow, um, Daniel Kalula went on to the Breakfast Club, I believe it was like last Thursday or Friday, and he was, you know, promoting the movie. And while he was promoting the movie, Charlemagne the God decided to be messy and throw digs at Lakeith. And Daniel was not here for it. Daniel stopped that petty bullshit dead in his tracks. Basically, he's asking him, you know, do you look at Lakeith differently? He played the role of an informant too good. You know, just, honey, being messy. Anyways, y'all, y'all go ahead and check out this snippet, honey. Damn, I, I wanted, did, did you find yourself looking at Lakeith uh, differently after the way he played this role? Because he did it too well. Yo, you look he still got beef. You look he still got beef, Charlemagne. Is that what's it? You I, look, I, I, I never had it. You looking at him sideways? Is that what was happening? No, I, n I never had an issue with him. I do feel like he was born to play this role, though. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not having that. We're not having that. We're not having that. Where is yeah? Charlemagne, where is yeah? But Lakeith, yeah, in this film, he makes the biggest sacrifice. Yes, in this he does. Film, he makes the sacrifice. He does. And in this film, he's serving Chairman Fred. Because in order to show you what Chairman Fred is, you have to show him what he isn't. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, you can't see the light without the dark. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And he served that and he put himself in the light. He, that's not his politics at all. You know, he doesn't, that's not how he feels at all. And it was really tough on him on certain days. I mean, he was really going through it. And for him okay. to give, to, to, to not be aligned politically to O'Neill and still give it his all and still. I think Daniel handled that question in the shade perfectly. Honey, I want a co-star like Daniel to have my back because a lot of these phonies would have just kind of laughed and key keyed and, you know, brushed it off. He stopped and dead in his tracks and was like, no, we're, we're not going to do that. And then, you know, he ended up big up in Lakeith. So Lakeith, when he saw the video, he was not here for it. And this is what Lakeith had to say. Lakeith said, hoes, this is what hoes do. Get sunned by reality. Get off me, bro. You a lame. Daniel ain't an idiot. Leave me be, dog, and find somebody else at See the God. So that is what Lakeith had to say. And so, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. I thought about covering it, but I was like, nah, I'm going to just wait and see how all this plays out. So then, all of a sudden, nobody. Nobody at all. Here comes Lakeith on TikTok, and he's dancing all wild. He's dancing all crazy. He has a picture of the informant, you know, the real informant, and he's, like, giving him the middle finger. Then he goes about showing a picture of Charlemagne the God, and he points a gun to Charlemagne's head. And then he starts dancing all crazy with the gun. Honey, this video was a hot mess. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.